Hello everybody. Today we're going to work on the electrical side of slamming our Murray riding lawnmower. In the process of lowering it this much, we did remove a lot of things, we displaced a lot of things, so now we're going to start going back with it. I have a battery box that's partially the original battery box. I'm going to make some modifications to it and I'll weld it up on the back side hanging off the end and then the second step is going to be figuring out this mess of wires. So this is everything from battery hot, battery ground, headlights, safety switches, ignition switch, fuse, everything that we need to make the mower run is all bundled up right here. So we'll just have to lay it out, figure out where it's all gonna fit, put it in a loom, zip tie to the inside of the frame, and we'll get this thing tidied up in no time at all. So let's get right into it. So this is the original battery box that used to be mounted in between the body and the frame right here. And the battery would drop into this plastic tub through the cutout in the seat. Now what I wanna do going back with it is to have it mounted up to the back side of the frame and hanging out of the back. And I'll have a sheet metal cap on the top, a sheet metal cap on the bottom. And I would like for this door to be able to unlatch and fold down to give us access to the battery. So the first thing I need to do is cut these tabs off of the top so I can have a nice flat piece of sheet metal welded on there. And I'm also gonna cut the back lip of this body about a half inch up just to give me a little bit more clearance so that the bottom of my battery box isn't hanging lower than the bottom of my frame. So I'm gonna add one more tack to where my fenders meet the body. That way I can cut this off and not worry about it coming loose. And then I'm gonna cut the tabs off my battery box and see how everything lines up in there. So let me give you an idea of what I plan on doing here. I cut about three quarters of an inch off of the back of my body here, and I cut the two side tabs off my battery box. The next thing I'm gonna do is cut about three quarters of the way down on the front side of this battery box and take this top section of the face off. Then I'm gonna cut a piece of sheet metal that I'll weld in the bottom. I'll leave these corners open for any water to drain out. And then I'm gonna make a lid for the top that comes down just over the sides. And it'll be a 90 degree lid that'll come all the way down and have a lip that sits over the bottom of the opening right here. And the back side of the top is gonna to be sheet metal right here. And there'll be hinges welded on the inside to the sheet metal and to the lid so the lid can pivot. And then I have these cabinet hardware magnets that I'm going to mount on the inside of the battery box on the sides so when the lid closes it'll snap shut with the magnets. That's the plan at least so let's see how it works out. All right, so here's where I'm at right now. I got my battery box notched out on the front side, all the tabs cut off on the top. I took the piece that I cut out of the front, welded it on the bottom for our base plate, and I took another piece of scrap, made a piece of flat strap that's gonna weld on the back right here with a couple extra tabs for reinforcement. And then our access door hinges are gonna be welded to this piece of strap and to the door and the door will hinge open, and so this whole cavity will be open when the door is open. So, let's get the battery, make sure it fits in there as it is. If it does, great, we'll keep moving. All right, it's a pretty tight fit, but it doesn't touch the posts on our battery. So I think if I can get some boots to go over these posts once everything's connected, I should be able to prevent any arcing inside the box. 
So with that being said, let's keep moving forward. I'm going to tack this piece on and then I will start working on the door. Once I get the door and the hinges and all that tacked on, I'll tack the whole assembly onto the back of the frame and we should be set after that. All right, here's our almost completed battery box. So, as it is without the door, this is gonna be welded right up on here. And then our battery door is gonna sit on just like that so that we can open the door, access our battery, and close the door to keep it hidden. So the next thing I need to do is flip it upside down and weld the hinges on the inside here. And then I'll put a couple more longer tacks, you can call them a short bead, long tack, uh, around the bottom here and anywhere else that I think needs welding. I think that's pretty much it. Then I'll be able to weld it onto the lower side of my frame and we'll see how it looks. We'll go from there. battery box. From this angle it looks okay. Let's try out the battery. Well, it is a tight squeeze getting it past those hinges. So I think I'm going to cut this down another half inch or so to give myself a little bit more room. After I cut this down another half inch, I got an old drawer handle that I'm going to put right here on our battery door. So it'll be easy open, easy close, and easy getting the battery in and out. So, obviously, first thing, we've got our handle on there. That's great. Second thing, we got this cut down about a half an inch. And third thing, I put the rest of the welds on the bottom of the box. So that's ready to go. Now, let's do one last test fit with the battery, and then I'll be able to notch a couple pieces out of the side so I can mount my magnet on both sides. And then, That'll be the last thing we do before we weld it to the frame. Now let's see. Oh yeah, that fits much better. My posts are not touching the top here. But I also don't really like how close they are. I may go with a threaded insert post battery instead of this top post. But for right now, it's not touching, so we'll call it fine. Okay, now I need to figure out where I want these magnets to sit. And I'll just notch a little bit out. All right, here it is. All finished up, it's ready to be welded onto the frame. 
So I put the two magnet stops in here and they, they do hold, they add a little bit of tension, but in the future I may want to go with some newer, stronger ones or just maybe something different entirely. But for now, I'm ready to get it welded up to the frame. So to make sure I have the right clearance, I'm going to leave my battery door all the way open and I'm going to line it up in here to where it's centered on the frame. And then I'll put a couple tacks in the corners right here and I have some one inch flat strap that I'm also going to weld on the inside of the battery box and on the outside of these risers right here. So these risers will now become part of the battery box since they're not welded to anything else. Here's our finished battery box. It is pretty ugly on the top. I may find a piece of rubber or leather that I can put over that. I'll put one strip that goes down lengthwise just to hide that gap and keep any water out. But I had to have that gap for my hinges to work because welding them on the inside, I could have done it a little better. But it is the way it is, that's okay. I'll find a way to make it look pretty and be functional. Otherwise, everything is pretty and functional and looking good. There's the side view, sticks out a little bit behind the rear tires, but it is higher up off the ground than the frame. Open it up, got plenty of access to drop a battery in there. And if we need to, we have access to our pulley also, so that's great. All right, so we have a very ugly gap right here in the top of our battery box. And we got an old real leather belt, one piece of strap leather, and some aluminum rivets. So I'm gonna cut a section of this belt out. And it's gonna go tight right here over that gap. And I'll have four rivets going in the lid side, four rivets going into the box side, and I'll cut it off flush at the edges right here. That'll hide our gap and it should be able to flex pretty well with the lid opening and closing. Got my leather strap ready to go. I cut it to length, I smoothed off the edges by rubbing it on the table, and then I took a little sledgehammer, folded the belt in half, and hammered it in both directions. So folded it both ways and hammered it to really loosen it up and give it some more flex so it's not so tough opening and closing. The next thing I'm going to do is drill eight holes, four on each side of the leather strap, and then I'm going to use a marker to transfer those holes onto the steel. After I drill out the marks on the steel, I'll be able to put my 3 16 by quarter inch aluminum rivets in there, use the rivet gun, and get that tightened down. Then we'll move on to wiring. I got the belt strap finished up and it's not as great as I thought it would be but I think it's gonna work so it's just a little bit tighter than I had imagined opening it 
I can get to about right there and then it really starts giving me some tension and it's wanting to bend this back piece of the box back here. But even opening it that far, I can still get my battery in there. So I have to do some finagling with it. I might go with a different uh, strap on the top. I may go with some thinner leather or um, maybe just a different plan altogether. But for right now, I'm gonna leave this and we'll start working on the wiring. All right, so here's our collection of wires. First thing I'm gonna do is get rid of the unnecessary things that aren't required to make the engine run, like our headlight harness. We can get this booger out of there and set it aside. I'm not gonna need that to start the engine. All right, so with the headlight harness out of the way, let's take a look at what we have left. Starting with yellow. On each of our safety switches, it has two, this one has three yellow wires coming into and out of it. Each of those, when you press the switch, it breaks the contact between the yellow wires. So if we eliminate the yellow wire altogether, it will permanently be as if the three switches are depressed, ready to start the engine. So let's clip those and get those out of the way, and then we'll assess what we have left. All the yellow wire is out of the way. It's already looking a whole lot cleaner. I'm gonna clip these orange wires close to the switch, and I'm gonna strip them down, twist them together, and bypass the switches. And I'll put a couple little baby wire nuts on there just to help keep it true. This is not a permanent fix, but it'll help us get everything organized and planned and laid out just the way we want it. All right, now we're at a, a good point, minimal wiring here. The only things that we have going on is we have our positive from the battery to our starter solenoid, negative from the battery to the frame, positive from the solenoid to the starter motor and we have our 12 volt source going from the starter solenoid to our ignition we have the harness for our ignition coil to give a spark we have the harness for headlights and we have our ignition ground that's also grounded to our starter solenoid frame our starter solenoid base rather and right here we have the signal wire coming from our ignition that goes down to our starter solenoid. So everything's here, it's nice and clean. I'm gonna start getting it back into the frame, but there's one catch. This cable is no longer long enough to reach the battery and our starter solenoid, because I'm gonna have it mounted up at the front inside the steering console, just like it was before. But since our battery is now hanging about another 10 or so inches off the back, we're gonna have to get a longer cable. And I got just the one. There we go. Now this is four gauge stranded copper wire. It's a little bit heavier duty than what originally came. It's also got quite a bit thicker insulation on it. But since I'm only replacing the one wire, I'm just gonna use this. I'll cut it to length and this will go from our battery to our starter solenoid. So I'm gonna get this measured out. I'm gonna cut it a little bit long and then we'll figure out how we wanna lay it in the frame. That's pretty close to halfway. I'm just gonna cut this right in half and that'll give me plenty of extra cable. I can trim it off on the back end when I'm ready. Now, all the other cables are going to stay the same. The distance between my starter solenoid and the starter is not going to change. 
and obviously the distance between my frame and the battery, I'll just have this bolted on to this section of the frame instead of where it originally was. So all we need to do is get this one out of here, get this one in here. I'll have to put some terminals on the end of it. On the rest of the wiring, I'm going to put as much of that cheap plastic flex conduit on it as I can just to try to prevent anything from shorting out or rubbing on anything it shouldn't be. All right, my positive battery cable is the only one that I really need to get in here before I set the body back on because it's gonna be run inside the channel of the frame and there's just no way for me to reach in there and do it while the body's on. So I'm gonna start weaving it through. And I'm gonna stay to this left side frame channel there's plenty of holes that I can use to zip tie it up against the frame, make sure it stays tight in there so I don't accidentally rub it with my belt. And it'll come out right here under my steering console. That should give me plenty of space just right there. my positive battery cable ran. This is, goes from positive on my battery all the way up to my starter solenoid. I got my console bolted back on. Next step is starter solenoid. I lost the original one. Uh, it's somewhere around here. I just couldn't find it, but I had a spare backup. So I'm going to mount this on the inside. So I'm going to get the front of this solenoid lined up flush with the front of my drivetrain tunnel. Then I'll mark the spots with a sharpie, drill them out, and I'll bolt it right in. This combined with my ignition switch is basically gonna be the hub that all my wires feed into and out of. From these two, they'll go to our ignition system, our starter system, and headlights. That's pretty much it. It'll be a fairly simple wiring diagram from here on out. So I'm just gonna eyeball this somewhere around the center. That looks pretty good. And I'm just gonna mark it with a Sharpie and drill it out. Here we go. All right, now that I have my starter solenoid mounted and it's grounded through the raw metal that is our drivetrain tunnel, when we do paint that, I may have to add a ground strap that'll go from somewhere on the frame up to that starter solenoid base. But I may also just leave a little spot of that raw right there, or grind it off after I paint it. Either way, my solenoid grounds through the body. So as of right now, it's fine. If I paint over it, I'll have to find another ground source for the body of the solenoid. But moving forward, now I can get my ignition switch mounted in here, figure out where all my wires go. And if they're too long, they shouldn't be too short, but if they're too long, I can figure out how long they are, how long they need to be. I can loop them up a little bit, put a zip tie or some electrical tape on it. That way I'm not having to cut and splice wires, but I'm also not having a bunch of excess wire hanging out everywhere. So let's get the ignition in here and see what wires we got. This red wire is our ignition 12 volt source. So this is going to go on the same post that our battery hot is gonna be on. So I'm gonna put it on this post right here. And we're gonna pretend like our 12 volt battery source is already on that post. 
next wire we have a ground so this one needs to be it really needs to be grounded anywhere it was grounded to the body uh, of the old solenoid but with how small this eye terminal is i'm not going to be able to put my same mounting bolt in there so i may i may just run a short tap through through this into the tunnel body we'll wait and see on that our headlight harness this is basically just going to run right up here and plug into our headlights we can zip tie it off to the frame or the mounts or whatever this is going to need that flex conduit i was talking about and this right here is our ignition harness this just plugs in like so and see this kind of excess wire is what i was talking about i can loop this up and put a zip tie on it or put some electrical tape on it just to keep it concealed and out of the way and lastly we have our signal wire and as you can see this can be shortened down a lot um, it really only needs to be about maybe eight inches long so i can trim it down right about here and it's going to connect onto the signal post of our starter solenoid which is this little flat post right down here on the side the last thing I need is this bad boy right here. This is going to carry the voltage from the other side of our starter solenoid right down here to the post on our starter motor. Now the ring terminal broke off when I was removing it originally, so I have to put a new ring terminal on there, but otherwise this thing is just fine. It's going to go on the solenoid, put a nut on it and it would connect to the battery just right there. So I even have a little bit of slack in this. I could easily cut a, you know, an inch off, an inch and a half off, strip it down, put a new terminal on, and it'll still be good. Plenty of room. So now we have a much simpler wiring diagram, as I said. Everything will be tied up. I'll shorten it as much as I can and leave a little bit of room just in case I need to make any repairs in the future. But shorten it as much as I can, hide what I can in the flex conduit, and we'll start buttoning this back up. Before I jump into the nitty gritty of wiring inside the console, I wanted to note that I went a little too crazy on the cutting the yellow wires. There was supposed to be one wire remaining that ran from my key switch down here to my ignition coil. So I'm gonna have to plug this in and I'll extend this wire back up to the key switch. I left just enough hanging off the bottom for something like this. I'll be able to tap right into it. So let's get into wiring now. So after thinking about it for a minute, I changed my mind on the wiring. I am gonna trim most of them down to the length that I need. I'll leave about one or two inches extra just in case I have any future repairs. But there's a lot of butt connectors and just weird stuff going on. I'd rather cut those out, solder it together, heat shrink it, and make it look a little bit nicer. So let's do that. After doing a lot of thinking, I've decided I'm going to get rid of this belt. This is just not enough clearance to easily get the battery in and out of there. It does work, but it's a pain. Uh, I'm fighting with the sheet metal, trying to reach in there and get everything hooked up. So I'm going to pull this off of there and leave me a comment down below if you got an idea of what I can use to hide that gap and give me enough flexibility to open and close the battery door.
All right, the battery's been sitting for who knows how long. So I'm gonna put that on the charger while I pop the headlights back into the hood and plug them into the harness. But before I do that, I'm gonna fix this little mess. Get rid of these butt connectors. I'll solder the wire back together and then I'll put it back in. There we go. That's much better. I'll just pop these in there. There we go. Now I can put a couple of zip ties just to keep this honest. We're set. All right, that's it for the wiring. I'm gonna put the lid back on the console drop it in neutral and we'll see what happens. All right, well that's it for the electrical side. We've got our battery box shut. It is snug in there, but it is shut. So, let's see if we got everything figured out. All right, it's in neutral. Well, it seems like we still got a weak battery. I'm gonna put the charger on this and we'll try it again in a minute. All right, I've had it on a 10 amp charge for about a half an hour. So let's go for round two. That's fantastic, it turns over. My battery's still a little bit weak, so I may just have to replace that, but as far as wiring, everything's good. Well, we have a fully functioning electrical system again, and that's very exciting because it gets us one step closer to our goal of driving this thing out of here. Next week, I'll be working on the shifter and the brake, so subscribe so you don't miss anything. Give me a thumbs up if you like what you see. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video. Bad.